So Manish uh, came. Hello. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Yes, sir, Akshay, present, sir. But actually, Akshay I present. have a yeah, network issue. Yes, sir. Which Akshay, Akshay Kumar, this Akshay Kumar? Or any separate Akshay is there? Yes, sir, yes. Second last one. And then, the last one is present. Okay. Because two Akash are there, two two Pimmas are there, so I get it. And Imesh, Akash, Varma, both are, uh, are able to find. And then Ganesh, Ishan, Asraf. Guys, tomorrow also class is there. Okay, tomorrow morning we have a class. Okay. Morning. Okay. Morning and afternoon or morning. So we'll see. Okay. Morning, same timing 10 30, 10 15, 10 30. Between 10 15, 10 30 only. Mostly it is morning. So if in case, in case possible, then afternoon also I will try. Otherwise, um, only off morning. Okay. So it will cover up a um, uh, few things. That's what I'm trying to say. So first of all, we'll start with the OSLAS layers, guys. Today, now, okay. I think, uh, yeah, better. I revise the yesterday networking points, and as well as we discuss about these things. Okay. So this is we don't do any designing here. So I believe we can. The first one is OSA model. Next, uh, we are going to discuss after this one IP addresses. Okay. What is OSA? Open System Interconnect. Open System Interconnect. We are communicating in the network. So how to communicate in the network? How to? What are the different phases in the communication from your source to destination and destination to source again? Actually, say exactly say A to B, B to A. How you will communicate from A to B and B to A? Or we can at least say from source to destination or destination to source means either while you are sending or receiving while you are sending or receiving what are the things happens to your data your packets your addresses that we will be understand from OSA layer it is a reference model it is a reference model it is a seven layers in a to understand the network and function of the network packets while you are sending or receiving a packet. So what is the stages of the packet is there? We can understand by these seven layers. This voice layer is standardized by ISO, International Organization for Standardization. And I3 will be given some journal number 802 represent Ethernet 802.11 represent our Wi-Fi network. So remember 802. Okay, so sometimes we'll get a lot of uh, 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 names are there. Ayana. Ayana, I can. ITF. Internet Engineering Task Force. Okay. These are the different things are there. I triple E, ISO. Whenever you touch this OSI, all these names comes here. Guys, IANA ICANN is take care of your IP addresses. Okay, IANA and ICANN is take care of your IP addresses, names, names. Like I want to create a, a website with a domain uh, something like latif.com, latiftech.com. So who will approve this? This is a name you can use it or not. I can only. So DNS names and IP addresses will uh, be approved by this I can organization only. These are all organizations will control this internet. These organizations controls your internet. Okay, 
controls your internet, your IP addresses, your names. Your name means your public IP addresses and your domain names kind of stuff will be controlled by ITL. Okay, guys, these seven layers, we have a seven layers. The seven layers are application layer, presentation layer, session layer, spot layer, network layer, data link layer, and a physical layer. Okay, these three layers, application layer, presentation layer, and uh, um, session layer comes under upper layers or a top layers, right? Where layers. These three layers is actually comes here. Application layer, presentation layer, session layer are upper layers, top layers are software layers. Transport is a transport. Transport is a end to end connectivity. Transport layer is end to end provide end to end connectivity. It is a art of OSM. Bottom three layers like a physical layer, network layer, sorry, physical layer, data link layer, network layer comes under hardware layers. These are the three layers called the bottom layers. This is upper layers, bottom layers. These three are a software layers. These three are a hardware layers. Okay. Guys, some people learn these OSA models in two directions. One is, one is like a, I told, I've written like this, application, presentation, session, transport, network, up, data link layer, and physical layer. Some people will may from the certain test works or some trainers, okay? So are some videos. They may learn like this, physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer, and application layer. Because of layer one, layer two, layer three, from bottom to top, you can see layer one is physical layer, layer two is a data link layer, layer three is a network layer, layer four is a transport layer, layer five is a session layer, layer six is a presentation layer, layer seven is a application layer. Okay. But I am telling from 7 to 1. Which one is correct? 7 to 1 or 1 to 7? Both are correct, guys, but do not interchange in between. Application layer, presentation layer, data layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, physical layer. So do not interchange in between like that. Okay, so always either 7 to 1 or 1 to 7. Both are correct. Some may people will argue with you. So like, no, 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 you have to follow this thing only. No, no, guys, because of I already I told OSL layers are and make you to understand how communication goes going on with your packet, how communication is going on from. OK, how communication is going on either while you are sending or receiving a packet. You are sending and receiving, right? So while you are sending, application layer to physical layer while you are receiving first you receive to physical layer it goes up to application layer understand there is a seven layer seven to one layer for seven layer is application layer so first layer is physical layer while you are sending a packet you are sending a packet you are sending data means from application layer to physical layer transport, from physical to destination. Destination received, this is receiving and received. Physical layer received a data and send up to application layer. Okay, like this. Okay, so A to P, so it's 7 to 1, 1 to 1, 1 to 7. Okay. So remaining is one to one only, but this is seven to one. Next, the physical layer, the device wise example is hub is a layer one device, physical layer device, switch is a layer two device, router is a layer three device because hub <coughs> works directly in a uh, bit wise only. So that's why it is. Okay. 
guys understand seven layers names yes sir see in application layer as a part of application layer application dealing with the application and both client side application server side application and their services and protocols so i'm telling protocols directly here what is the protocol and what is their port numbers what is the meaning of protocols so last time for a batch <laughs> one batch i told them i will tell the protocols and port numbers later but uh, not completely i can't able to make it on time so now i don't want do, don't want to do it for your batch okay so <laughs> that is important guys what is this protocols and port numbers kind of stuff what is the protocol you want to access a website so you are a client now in a browser you are a client okay in a browser in you have a web browser inside so in a web browser you put a name uh, like a www.google.com right i use a simple one like a, my favorite is always w3schools.com and uh, how i put a w3schools.com how many people are having a favorite website is w3schools.com yes sir right yes sir Not a, yes apart, sir so apart from that bootstrap is also a good website which one sir bootstrap boot it is showing some get bootstrap dot com what it is i don't understand I, my my this is i'm trying you don't know anything but you can still make it possible with less time <laughs> w3skills.com yes sir okay, w3skills so and sir tutorial points are tutorial points java t point but tutorial point java t point good material lot of examples but here it is small material small part so you can feel that i completed example okay. okay the java t point is much better compared to tutorial points i found that one very recently so i open a website in my browser https generally https i use right this is https right https colon slash slash w3schools.com what will happen it reaches finally through whatever it is happen in between finally it reaches to this w3schools.com so what it will happen it send a request to this web server okay it will send a request what request it will send http of course s is also there because of uh, it is a secure wise you want to send it send http as request so our client will understand and http request it send a http request to this server okay i want a web page so this server understand when it is received a http request yes he is asking he is asking he is asking
So it will understand. He is asking. This PCA is asking a web page. How server understand PCA is asking web page because of HTTP request the protocol. Then what is this server will do? Server respond to the client and send a page or, a, or a, it will respond according to the client request. And of course it will send this HTTPS response. Because I given already HTTPS, so I'm talking in HTTPS manner. Easy is HTTP. Okay. For example, this is the web server. I send a request. Okay. I send a request. I send a request. A request is, for example, a FTP request or SMTP request. It means I want to send a mail. SM. TP request. I am sending a SMTP request. What this server will do it? <laughs> what server will do it? It drop the packet. Why it is drop the packet? This is a web server, not a mail server. It is a web server, not a mail server. It don't understand what is the protocol is that one. So it will don't give any response. It won't give any kind of response. Guys, understand importance of protocol. The protocol represents a particular service, web service, file service, mail service, or maybe remote desktop services or SSH services. OK, or it can be a, a authentication service or it can be a network time synchronization related services. OK, VPN services. OK. OK, so this is. Protocols and portals to understand what is a request from client and the server. OK, to understand what is a request from clients. What I have written and what is changed? I don't know. I will go with my world one only. So, what is a protocols or a, or a set of rules? Protocols are a set of rules. What is the use of protocols? Protocols are used to understand what is a request. What is the request from? What is the to understand what is the request from client? Request from client. By server. Request from the client by the server and also exactly say type of communication. It is a type of communication. So see HTTP, we are requesting web page. FTP, you want to say upload or download a file. SMTP, you want to send a mail. Yes, POP3 IMAP, you want to receive a mail. Okay. NTP is to synchronize the time. LDAP to authenticate the users or uh, authenticate the services. SSH telnets are you for accessing remote purposes. Guys, understand what is the use of protocols and their port numbers? Yes, sir. These are the sum of the protocols and their port numbers. Most frequently used the protocols and their port numbers. So mostly possible, try to understand, try to remember. So if you don't remember, try more. No problem. So I will make it one page. I will try to make it as a one page.
this is only to understand uh, what it is kind of stuff. So how much space is left? Yes, very good. Still, we have a little bit space. Then we'll down make it. Can I just in this? One? Okay, <laughs> that is also good now. Okay, guys, here it is. Some protocols and port numbers. HTTP hypertext transmission protocol. What is used? Web page request. Web pages, web related communication. Port number is 80. HTTPS. It is also web communication like a HTTP, but it is yes is there means secure. What is the meaning of secure? We send a HTTP data over SSL. We send a HTTP data over SSL. It means it encrypt a HTTP data. So you have a WhatsApp, WhatsApp end to end encryption. What is the meaning? You can see the data and other person who are using that WhatsApp recipient can see the data. And data is while transmitting from. One second. Hello. Who is this?
Okay, guys, sorry. Uh, <coughs> someone got a question. So, so HTTP, HTTPS, and again, guys, remember, I don't know. I just I am here for a giving training purpose only. So I don't know about your any version test or when it is version test or any schedule about HCL. I don't know. So only main important is for my training and how to make you understand things only about a technical stuff. OK, any doubt guys, please put it in a group. If you have a group, put it in a group. If you send personal message and if you think not responding, I don't respond if you are sending to me that a lot of people are sending a message without any name also. There is no name, no batch, no batch number, no name, nothing. By your phone number, we don't know anything. Why? Because of we don't save your phone numbers. OK, in earlier days, that is a different point. That is cognizant three months of batches. There two to three months, one single batch, <laughs> full batch, full day. So they'll spend with me for more than two months. Then I will note down only few members uh, for only basic contact purpose, not only a group. OK, so your people don't know my I don't know your numbers and all. So please don't send. Any personal uh, wise also if you have if you required anything for your personal purpose, then uh, you can ask me like you want to learn something then where to learn where which course like that. That is OK, <laughs> I can tell. Any other issues put it in a group. So if you put in a group, the relevant any relevant person can able to respond. OK, because different batches, I don't understand who is handling which batch. <laughs> OK, that's the point. OK, guys, sorry. HTTP, HTTPS, HTTP is port number is 80. HTTPS is port number is 443. What is HTTP? You are asking website means it is HTTP site only. But what is this S? It is our SSL. It's secure. Your website while it is transmitting from source to destination. What is secure means it encrypt this HTTP data. It encrypt this data while it is sending to destination. FTP, FTP 2021. So upload and download the files VSFTP, SFTP, different uh, secured uh, protocols also available. SFTP, VSFTP, secured protocols. This is FTP 2021 protocol. Port SSH for remote access. I have a, a remote Linux server is there. I want to access a Linux server through my PC using PuTTY, then SSH protocol. OK. Uh, if you are using a cloud, AWS cloud, a Linux instance you are using, you have to access your Linux using PuTTY only. Okay, support number is 22. Telnet, so Telnet is a remote uh, access purpose only. SSH, Telnet, RDP, remote access, but SSH and Telnet are a command line based interaction. SSH is with encryption, Telnet no encryption. So remote access only, but no encryption. What is the advantage of having encryption? Encryption is no one knows what is the data in the packet. No one will understand what is the data in this packet. OK, tell that. RDP, remote desktop protocol. Remote desktop protocol, of course, it is encrypted method is there, but inside encryption is there. So if you want to see others person desktop, OK, remotely there is a server you want to access the server Direct the desktop environment, you use RDP protocol, remote desktop protocol. SMTP, POP3, IMAP, these three are used for a mail communication purpose. SMTP for sending a mail, POP3 and IMAP is used to retrieve the mails. TFTP protocol for remote configuration, upload or download a remote configuration files. So we use TFTP protocol. Trivial file transfer protocol. DHCP, you are getting an IP address from DHCP server. Your laptop or your mobile phone have ha, has having an IP address. How you, your mobile or your laptop or your desktop getting an IP address automatically from DHCP server. That protocol is DHCP protocol, dynamic host configuration protocol. DHCP server assign an IP address to the clients automatically 
DNS. You open a websites. You are opening a website, but the websites are you are opening, but you don't know the IP address of that sites, right? You don't know the IP address of DNS. Already I told sorry. Uh, DNS domain name system DNS servers. What it will do? You open a website or we try to communicate to a domain or a server in the domain. Okay. You know the name, but you don't know the IP address. You open a Facebook.com, YouTube.com, okay, uh, Google.com, or uh, maybe that's uh, W3Schools.com, Java T point. OK, so whatever it is, you do you know the name, but you don't know the IP address. So the request sent to the DNS server, DNS server returns an IP address of your YouTube.com or Facebook.com or Google.com. Whatever you open that IP address, you will get it and you will communicate with the IP address only. Remember always. All communications by IP address only. NTP server guys network time protocol. If you see your uh, system date and time, this date and time is set by NTP only. NTP server only. Kerberos, Kerberos, and LDAP both are authentication protocol. Kerberos is uh, one of the uh, more powerful authentication system, and it is encrypted method is also there. Okay, we authenticate users when they log into domain. Username password will be authenticated. What is authentication? Verification of identity called authentication. There is a two words are there guys authentication and authorization. Authentication means verification of. User identity username and password is verified and yes, correct then means authenticated authorization means yellow. User to access accessing. Giving access, access. OK, yellow user to access access. Is comes under authorization. Authentication authorization. OK, SNMP simple network management protocol. It is 161 162 port number used in a monitoring purpose. <laughs> OK, guys, these are the some of the uh, um, protocols we use Hello, in the sir. network. Yeah, tell me, tell me. LDAP. This one, LDAP. LDAP is also authentication protocol. Lightweight directory access protocol. Authentication. LDAP is more uh, useful in uh, like uh, Linux and Windows. Both the sites we use it. It is a mostly open LDAP type, means open protocol. Kerberos is used in a uh, Microsoft uh, Active Directory. Yeah, this is a uh, part. OK, guys, I will tell about the application layer, presentation layer, session layer. Then I will give you a break. Then we'll discuss about a transport and remaining. OK. Otherwise, if you have energy, then I will complete everything in one single shot on. We'll see. OK, <laughs> seven layers. We read as seven layers, guys. You have to remember all seven layers. OK, yes, not always it will ask in interview or not, which is there or not. No, I don't know what people will ask in interview. I can give you a lot of questions, but whether really they're asking or not now. I don't know, but point is. Your profile is the starting level as a fresher it is a basic level profile you should understand each and every terminology in a both service desk related terminologies as well as technical terminologies also okay that's why you have to learn everything plus these are the technologies these are the not a even a technology these are the very basic points 
to understand any technology, anything you want to go for a cloud, you want to go for a CCND, you want to go for network engineer, you want to go for a server part. These are very basic things help you to understand it. That's why I'm telling uh, one by one slowly. Otherwise, I'll give you names. Go and buy hard and you can do it. So I can complete it in a th two to three days or maybe my exam one week. OK. And uh, yeah, I done a big mistake. I didn't tell you what are the devices we use in the networking. That part we skipped. <coughs> Now, well, tomorrow I will complete that one and IP addresses. Okay. So, guys, the first one is application layer. I've started with the application, application presentation like that. I will go. Application layer is dealing with the application part. What is application part? I want to access the website, but I'm using a web browser. Web browser is a your web client. Web browser is a your web client. Here I am using WhatsApp application to send and receive a messages. Application. This is a web browser. This is Microsoft Teams application, client side application. Okay. And where is this putty? Yeah. This is a putty. I want to connect my remote server with SSH protocol. This is an application use it to connect a remote server with SSH protocol for a telnet protocol application. OK, I will show you another application FileZilla. FileZilla is an application. Is it to upload or a download of files? Upload or a download of files from your local PC to remote PC, remote PC to local PC. You can upload and download a files with a FTP protocol. So you have to give their remote server name and username, password and port number and connect it and you can upload and download it the files. You can transfer the data from your local PC to remote server using FTP protocol. It is a client application. Outlook. Outlook is a mail client application. You can send and receive an application through Outlook. You can send and receive an application through Outlook. OK, so that is what I'm trying to say. Application, you can send a mail. You can receive a mail through your Outlook. OK, guys, this is the point I'm trying to say client side applications. And server side applications. What are the server side application? I have a web browser and I am accessing a website. Means there is a web server. Okay. I am accessing a mails through Outlook. Right? Using Outlook as a mail client application. Then there is a mail server like a Microsoft Exchange mail server, Zimra mail server, Squirrel mail server, like different mail servers are there. There is a mail server application. Here it is mail client application. I'm using putty app to connect my SSH server or telnet server. OK, FileZilla is an application is to use to connect FTP server for uploading or downloading. RDP remote desktop protocols to connect a remote server or a remote desktop through MSTCS client application means there is a server and there is a client. Server provide a service, client access the service. Server side application, client side applications comes under application layers, guys. And also protocols and their port numbers comes under application layer only because of in web browser you use HTTP or HTTPS. In uh, Outlook, you use SMTP, POP3, or IMAP. OK. Yeah, FileZilla, FTP protocol you are using. Putty, you are using a SSH or Telnet protocol. Means there is an application and uh, for a certain purpose, and that purpose will use 
for that purpose we are using a protocol right can you put a ssh in web browser can you put a ftp in a, a putty you can't put it right so we don't put it so why because of application for that is a specific purpose specific protocol specific service okay so that is a application layer application is a layer dealing with the client and server applications and protocols and their port numbers what is this port number what is the use of these port numbers port numbers are representation of protocols these protocols and port numbers are reserved means a fixed port numbers are there for a certain protocols okay next one is presentation layer next one is presentation layer application layer presentation layer presentation layer is encode the data and decoding the data data will be encoded and uh, decoded what meaning is your data can be in different format it can be like a simple text format it can be html format it can be video format it can be uh, picture formats so different type of data is there in a while you are transmitting data right that data can be converted into ascii format called a encoding data decoding means when you are receiving the data is decoded and generated back to <coughs> normal format compression and decompression <coughs> compression and decompression data is usually bigger than the size so you compress the data then data become little smaller than usual when you are receiving a data data is in already in decompression mode so you have to decompress and make it as a normal size <laughs> encrypting and decrypting when you are sending a data you have to encrypt the data so like you are using https or ssh or sftp or vsftp so what happened data has to be encrypted and sent right so you have to encrypt the data using help of ssl or tls so you encrypt the data and you send it so the no one will understand what is the data inside your Uh, packet uh, okay inside uh, what is the data in, in in that one we don't no one will understand even they cache your packet they don't understand what is the data inside at end uh, at end of the uh, place means when you receive a encrypted data it will decrypt at your user end <laughs> okay guys this is presentation layer understand up to presentation layer Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Session layer is look like a smaller one, but it is actually session layer is lot of stories a very important one. Guys, session layer is purpose is to create a session, maintain a session, and terminate session. So only single line. But very important is, guys, when you are sending a packet, this session layer. create an id and send it attach this session layer a session id will be created attached to your data that is transmitted and received so this send to the destination at a destination of course the session id will be received okay and uh, follow with the end okay now this destination received a packet for example i am sending a request i am sending a request request is sent now i am receiving response from destination i receiving a response so once i completed uh, completely got my response then session is completed okay for example i open a web page i open a web page for example I will open a web page. It take time, right? So it is fastly it is coming. So we have to go with the uh, in a slow machine kind of stuff. It will take time, right? So it will take time. 
So I send a request. Server received and I received a data. Now entire my PC got a data. Entirely what are the data in that page? Dumped into my. Browser now I received a complete data. OK, the session once it is you received completely, then it is uh, um, session will be completed. Okay, so I will tell you what is the importance of this session. Everybody knows importance of session, but they don't know that is the session. When you do transaction, you do payment through online, Amazon.com, Flipkart.com, IRCTCs. While you do payment, so you type your card number, uh, your uh, remaining details, click OK, then you receive OTP, click OK. Immediately what it will come? Do not refresh your page or do not press the back. Wait till transaction completed. Do you remember that one? Do you recollect that information? When you do mainly payment process. OK, so what happened? So session is connected to your uh, remote banking. It's from your PC to your bank, the session layer is created. No? So the session is connected. So the session within that session only, within that session ID only, your transaction should be completed. If in case the network is disconnected, the session ID is gone, the session is gone. If you refresh, a new session will be created. So you don't know if you refresh what happened. You don't know whether transaction completed or not. Maybe the transaction is completed, payment is done, but uh, the payment uh, to the <coughs> the payment information may not be received to the other server because Amazon server is different. You are in a one place, Amazon is in another place your payment, uh, your bank is in different place, right? So again, the bank is should be authorized your payment. The payment information has to send to your Amazon. Amazon should uh, understand, uh, approve that uh, payment. OK, then your order will be confirmed. So what will happen if you do refresh? The session ID will be disturbed. You don't know whether order is placed or not, whether it is payment is done or not money cut or not we don't know anything you have to wait till some time whether if in case luckily you done an order is placed or payment is successful order is placed then good sometimes what happened payment is detected payment is detected but order uh, means the transaction from bank to your uh, uh, amazon app not there so that is the power of session layer guys so that's why when you do payments, the session will be there. You know, you are downloading a data from your remote PC, like a 100 MB file, 90 MB downloaded. Now internet is disturbed. So what happened? Session layer is gone. The session part is gone. Again, you want to download remaining 10 MB. You want to download. You cannot download. You have to download it from starting only. From zero again, you have to download. Think about you are downloading 10 GB, maybe 1 GB file you want to download. So 90 uh, means 990 GB downloaded, only 10 MB left. Now internet is interrupted. So no further download. Again, you have to download it from starting. Then what people do? They are using internet download managers, or a free download managers to download the data if in case it is a mainly big data it is you use that one. So but guys, this is up to session layer. If you are OK, then I will complete this uh, transport layer, network layer, transport only big one, network and remaining are smaller. I will complete and will close the session for today. Tomorrow we'll see remaining part. Otherwise we have to take a break.
again we have to come back okay then class extension is there so again up to 132 goes okay so that's why i'm not doing anything so transport layer guys so i will put a transport layer into next page transport layer is also very important provide end-to-end -end connectivity it segment the data data will be divided into small small parts you are having a data this data will be divided into small small parts because smaller the parts it is easy to transmit smaller the size easy to transmit it is each piece is more than two must be more than 64 bytes to 150 1500 bytes size each part in between 16 4 bytes to 1500 bytes if it is less than 64 it is invalid it is like a chunk kind of stuff only okay so this process we call it as a segmenting segmenting means that cut the data into small small parts and uh, what it will do transport layer it numbering and sequencing on this data it put a numbering on this data and sequence under this error correction also done by error correction error correction is also done by transport layer okay so what is this error correction guys so i will tell you very simple so there is a put a, a, a simple numbering and sequencing so look at here for example i want to send a message hello how I am using this example for so many days and so many years or so. It's very simple. Four packets, four, not four packets. It is the single data. Hello, how are you? Single message. I am segmenting. I am cutting the data into small parts. I am putting a numbering just for our understanding, guys. Really, it is won't happen like this. This is for only our understanding. I put a numbering and sequence. Now I'm sending a data. The first one I send and uh, destination received a packet. Okay, destination received a packet. I send a data, destination received a packet. Okay, what destination will do? It send an acknowledgement. Yes, I received this packet. Second packet is I send. Yes, destination received a packet. It's received. Third packet has sent, destination not received, no acknowledgement. Acknowledgement is not there. Acknowledgement is not there. I send a fourth packet. Okay, I, I will keep sending. So that is fourth packet is received. And I see, received a acknowledgement packet for a fourth. Okay, hello. How? you received where is the this part third packet is missing now source understand source understand <clears throat> for third packet i didn't receive an acknowledgement then it will send the third packet again so now third packet is received and i got a acknowledgement yes third packet is received now what is happened here hello how you are so it is a mistake right again the data format is changed but we have a sequence address there numbering and sequence so what this transport layer will do it put all this data into sequence order once it is received all the data uh, parts all the segments once it is received it put it into the sequence order. so guys whenever you are not received a data so the destination not send acknowledgement for that particular packet so source understand source understand this particular packet is not received by destination it will send it again once the packet is received once the once the part packet is received the destination reconstruct destination reconstruct the packet sorry reconstruct the entire packet as in the sequence order 
Okay, that's the process we call it as a error correction. Error correction means it is not do any new thing here. It keep order. So because of you send an order and with some order uh, sequence, whenever it is received, whenever you received a data at a destination, so once you received all the packets, we'll put it in a sequence under. So that is part is error correction of what I'm speaking also. Okay, so transport layer provide end-to-end -end connectivity, meaning is it segment the data, data is divided into small, small parts. Numbering and sequencing, it, it, it will put a numbers on the data, so then it will kept in the sequence. Multiplexing and demultiplexing of protocols means multiplexing and demultiplexing means um, what will happen? What is this? I have to tell about transport layer. So this one, right? Yeah. Multiplexing and demultiplexing of TCP UDP protocols. What is this TCP UDP protocols guys? This is again one important part, even though it is not a, a very important. Uh, we don't generally usage, but. Even a lot of people even they don't understand. They keep pressing on this TCP UDP part. OK. Still, I don't understand why. OK, so no problem. So I make it as a smaller size. Still it is not pick up. OK, no problem, guys. What is TCP? TCP means transmission control protocol. TCP transmission control protocol. Sir, it's, uh, it's UDP. transfer. Yeah, transmission control protocol. Sir, I think uh, it should be transfer. Okay. 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 Uh, it sometimes confusion is coming. User yeah. datagram protocol. UDP is a user datagram protocol. What is this transmission control protocol? User datagram protocol, guys. We are discussed about a uh, protocols, protocols and their port numbers, right? You yeah, have you seen HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, SSS, Telnet, RDP, different type of protocols we are discussed. OK. In these protocols, some protocols are TCP type protocol, some are UDP type protocols. That's the difference. No difference. Here, OK. Some protocols are TCP type protocols. Some protocols are UDP type protocols. So what is this protocols? So the behavior of the protocol we have to understand here. The behavior of the protocol we have to understand here. TCP type protocol, when you send a packet, the destination, when destination received, destination will send an acknowledgement to the source. For example, APC, BPC. A send a packet, B received, and B send an acknowledgement to A as yes, I received a packet. Okay. For example, uh, just I change the matter here because uh, the size is become larger and we can't understand. For example, source send a packet, a destination is not received and destination don't send any kind of acknowledgement, no acknowledgement. No acknowledgement. So what happened? The source will understand. Source will understand packet is. Source will understand packet is not received by. OK, so look at 
source and a packet to destination, destination received, destination will send an acknowledgement packet to the source. OK, next. Next, if one hour the source send a packet at the destination. One hour use whenever the source send a packet. If destination is not received a packet, what happened? Destination don't send any acknowledgement to the source. When it is not, uh, whenever the source is not received a acknowledgement from destination, source thing. Source thing, destination is not received a packet. Destination not received a packet. So what it will do? The source will send a packet again. Source will send a packet again. <laughs> source will send a packet again. So that's why it is. TCP is a acknowledgement based. Whenever source send a packet to destination, once destination received a packet, it will send an acknowledgement. Because of that acknowledgement, source understand destination received a packet. Destination received a packet. Whereas coming to this. Okay, so whereas uh, coming to this UDP, user datagram protocol, it is not a acknowledgement based protocol. OK, the protocols comes under UDP user datagram protocol. There are not a. <laughs> so unnecessarily I decrease their sizes. Source uh, uh, in a user datagram protocol, source and a packet to the destination. Source and a packet to the destination. Okay, destination never say I received a packet. So, source don't know destination is received a packet or not. Okay, and it will send a packet. Okay, if destination is received a packet, good. Destination is not received a packet, we don't know. Okay, so that is the UDP type. That's why UDP type protocols we call it as a non reliable protocol. UDP type protocols we call it as non reliable protocol and connectionless protocols. Okay, so these are the difference between TCP and UDP. Guys, very simple transmission control protocol, user datagram protocol. You have a lot of protocols are used to communicate. The behavior of the protocol depends upon the type of protocol. Some protocols are TCP type, some are UDP type. Some behavior is both the side, means TCP type and as well as the UDP type protocols also there. Okay, so if TCP type protocols, when they, whenever a source send a packet to destination, destination received a packet and then it will give acknowledgement to the source. The source understand destination received a packet. If source does not receive the acknowledgement, meaning a source understand destination is not received a packet. So because of it is two way connectivity, two way communication is there, two way understanding is there. That's why it is connection oriented. Not just to send and leave it. It is also knowing whether it is received or not. That's why it is connection oriented and reliable protocols. Whereas in a UDP protocols, it's a no acknowledgement date. It means whenever the source send a packet, the destination received or not, the source don't know. So source will keep sending a packet. Some people like uh, there is a faster, uh, slower kind of stuff. Uh, of course, as compared to T UDP is a faster than TCP. UDP is a faster than TCP, relatively. 
non realable why because of source don't know the destination is received a packet or not connectionless again protocol is connectionless meaning is source don't know destination is received or not there's from no connectivity between destination to source is not there guys some people give example some test books or some lectures will give example that is connection oriented means wide kind of communication connectionless means wireless communication for example you are using wi-fi means your protocol is udp type protocol no guys that is a blunder that is a mistake so there is no point here a uh, wired or wireless okay it is a behavior of protocols better in in the future better they should remove this connection oriented and connectionless why because of um, not exactly well, the meaning is people are uh, teaching in different ways that's the point even my lecturer told me that connection oriented means it is a wide uh, and connectionless means it's a wireless wi-fi kind of example he given there is no guys i am using wi-fi now and i am using http http is tcp protocol guys are you okay with this one now yes sir yes sir So what is this? We'll do it multiplex and demultiplex TCP and UDP protocols. Also, this transport layer will do flow control, windowing or a flow control means you're transmitting a data from source to destination. You're transmitting data, right? You will send a lot of packets at a time, right? But destination PC may not having capacity to capture all the packets. Cannot able to capture all the packets because Maybe it is a slower or maybe it is a busier port. It is difficult to take the packet and process the packet. So we'll estimate. We'll estimate the transport layer estimate the how much data can be received by destination. Based on that, it will keep sending the data. OK, so that is the point. Guys, there is a one more point. It is that is PDU packet data unit. In a application layer presentation layer session layer whatever the layer data is it's just a data only whatever the format of the data is we call it as a just a data but whatever the data it is it is called a pdu packet data unit not packet packet data unit in all our seven layers the late data in the layer can be any format okay but we call that one as a pdu so application layer data will be go to presentation layer in presentation layer it modifies the data uh, it modify data means compress the data in encrypt the data encoding the data will be there in a session layer the session id will be added there okay session id is only added but still it is a kind of data but what are the data what are the data format it is it is pdu packet data unit this packet data unit again the transfer to your uh, transport layer transport layer the data will be segmented sequence numbering is on it okay there is a sequence numbering tcp udp um, multiplexing and flow control information also added so this total additional information in the tcp header tcp header plus data from session layer data from session layer plus TCP header is there. See the total packet, the total one we call it as a segment. Now the, our PDU is segment. So transport layer generate a segment. This segment will be sent to the network layer. This segment will be sent to the network layer. What will happen in the network layer guys? The network layer
Okay. The network layer. What is happening at network layer? Network layer is actually dealing with the rooted protocols and routing protocols. Rooted protocol means logical addressing. Rooted protocol means logical addressing. And uh, what are the logical different logical addresses are there? IP addresses. Okay, one of the logical addresses IP addresses. I didn't write any other things, guys. Anyway, we don't use it. We don't see like IPX, SPX kind of stuff. We don't see no problem. So there are a lot of confusion in it. So rooted protocols, routing protocols. Every device having an IP address, right? Every device should have an IP address to communicate in the network. Every device should have an IP address to communicate in the network, right? So that is uh, our logical address. So rooted protocols dealing with the logical addresses and example is IP addresses and IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Are there. Routing protocols. Routing protocols means it, routing protocols will tell how to reach the destination. Routing protocols. How to reach destination. Okay, so different routing protocols are there, guys. I RIP, AZRP, YSPF, BGP, ISS. So different routing protocols are there. Routing protocols will create a routing table. Using routing table, we are reach the destination. So I'm going to add all these things. Routing protocols tell how to reach destination. OK, so rooted protocols means. Address of a device, OK? Address of a device. Uniquely identified device in the network is IP address. Guys, there is a network header. What is a network address? Header is source IP destination IP. So you are sending a packet means your IP address and your destination IP address will be added to your segment which is came from. Transport layer the, the total data we call it as a packet or PDU packet data in it is packet here. This packet is sent to data link layer. OK, so what is the network layer? The network layer at network layer simply say at network layer the source IP address and destination IP address will be added to your packet to, to your segment. So that is called a. So. So that is called a packet. OK, so source IP destination IP address added to segment. So that is called a packet. The packet sent to the data link layer in data link layer having two sub layers. The first one is logical link control LLC. Another one is a Mac layer. Logical link layer uh, logical. Link control is dealing with the WAN protocols. So if you are using a WAN type of connectivity, the WAN connectivity is in the data link layer like a PPP, HDLC, frame relay, MPLS. These are all uh, different type of uh, WAN connectivity protocols. OK, so next one is MAC layer. You know the MAC address, right? So this is will tell about your MAC address, which is given by manufacturer of NIC. Of course, OK, it is a 48 bit in size. 12 hexadecimal. It is a 48 bit represented in 12 hexa numbers. It is a. Also called as a physical address, right? We know MAC address. So at data link layer to the packet, source MAC address, destination MAC address will be added. And as a data tail, it is a CRC will be added. What is CRC? Cyclic redundancy check. What is the use of CRC? Error checking. Guys, remember data link layer, data link layer, error checking, transport layer, error correction. OK, what is error corrections? If in case destination not received a packet, so source knows destination does not receive a particular packet, destination source will send the packet again. 
at destination the packet will be rearranged once destination received a packet so destinations will be at destination packet will be rearranged using numbering and sequencing that is called a error correction will happen at transport layer that kind of error correction will happen what is this error checking whenever destination received a packet whenever destination received at data link layer at a destination data link layer it check the data is data is good or corrupted so while transmitting data data possibility data packet can be corrupted right the packet data unit can be corrupted so what it will do it will check at data link layer only so is data is safe or corrupted using crc value crc is an algorithm use actually used to check data and uh, and also it is to find whether data is good or a data is corrupted so error checking data link layer source mac address destination mac address packet plus crc totally become frame this frame is sent to the physical layer okay so what will happen at physical layer physical layer is your physical connectivity what kind of media what kind of connectivity you are using based on that use this one so then yeah okay this physical layer is converted into frame the frame sorry the frame is from data link layer the frame will be converted into bit stream the frame will be converted into bit stream depends upon your physical layer connectivity or uh, the device at a physical layer or connectivity that bit stream will be converted okay for example you are using any kind of ethernet fast ethernet gigabit ethernet connectivity is utp stp cable the data is converted into electrical signal for example your uh, data you want to transmit or receive through wifi signal then it is data is in the radio signal different frequencies so data so the physical layer you are uh, using certain servers or uh, certain switches so connectivity is a light wave signal fiber optical signal fiber channels okay for example i have a router in my home i have a router i am connecting to router using wifi but my router is connecting to uh, isp using fiber channel so the router again it converts in a bottom layer the signal is into fiber light waves right so this is the point guys these are all six layers there is a one point this one this think like this you have a two computers one is pca and another one is pcb pca is a source pc pcb is a destination pc <laughs> yeah if you want to decrease much lesser also no problem okay this is a source pc this is a destination pc when you are sending when you are sending a packet from a to b what happen first application layer application layer will tell what kind of application you are uh, using what kind of application is it a command prompt or it can be a web browser it can be some other application right application protocols it is right and what is your data the data is uh, data uh, should be uh, encoded first of all data should be encoded compressed and encrypted data then session id will be created and added to your data then total data will be sent to your pdu sent to your transport layer that data will be divided into small parts called as segmenting and there is they put a small numbering on it okay numbering and sequencing order okay transport layer right so what is another things it will added transport layer transport layer segmenting mm, 
uh, windowing, TCP, UDP, multiplexing. So all this information added to your PDU, then it is become segment. This segment is sent to the network layer. So network layer adds source IP, destination IP to your segment and it become packet. The packet sent to data link layer. The data link layer uh, adds the source MAC address, destination MAC address and CRC value to your packet. Then it become frame. The frame is sent to the physical layer. The physical layer converts your frame into a bit stream. Depends upon your connectivity, it will convert into that signal. For example, I'm using a, a wire connectivity. So then it is uh, electrical signal. I'm using Ethernet type of connectivity. It is a electrical signal. So at a destination, I am at a destination. The destination received your signal, physical layer, right? So through electrical signal received, convert into frame, convert into frame. The frame is sent to the data link layer. In data link layer, at data link layer, okay, sorry. At data link layer, they open this frame. First of all, they check the data with CRC. Any data errors are there. If no data error, then good. If any error is there, we drop the packet. You drop the packet, you don't tell anything. You just drop the packet. Source will understand, okay, uh, there is some problem is there. So then it will resend it, okay? So at data link layer, packet will check with CRC. Yes, packet is good. Then check the source MAC address and destination MAC address. You store the source MAC address and destination MAC address aside first of all. I'm writing at PCB. Okay, what I received source MAC address as A means A PCs MAC address I received and B B C MAC address already it verifies it uh, belongs to me or not. So that will be verified by B. Okay. The destination MAC address, it must be B's MAC address. It should be verified by B. Next. So once you remove this source MAC address, destination MAC address, and CRC from your frame, remaining is packet. The packet is sent to the network layer. At network layer, we add a source IP, destination IP. Then you check the source IP address and destination IP. So it will verify the destination IP is B's IPs or not. If it is not a B's IP, you drop the packet. <laughs> okay, you drop the packet. If it is a B's IP, B's IP, destination IP same, then it accept the packet. And what it will do? Source MAC address I received, then now it is source IP, A's IP address will be not down here. Okay. Now IP address is completed, it removed, then remaining is segment only. This segment is sent to transport layer. Transport layer received all the segments, arranged the, all the segments into one sequence order, extract their TCP and UDP parts, demultiplex the TCP UDP thing, arrange the data into one sequence order, and make sure that error data is constructed. That data now it is sent to the session ID. The session ID is reserved and go to the presentation. In presentation data will be decompressed, decrypt, decoded. So finally we got the main data, main protocol request and data there in a presentation. It is given to application layer. At application layer, already I told server side application, so they will understand your protocol and what kind of uh, reply they have to give. They will pack it again with that package, then send to the presentation layer, presentation layer, same session, transport, network, data link, physical, physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application. Okay, so we send a data through application, we receive the data to application only okay so top to bottom bottom to top that's why i said no problem guys either you go with the top to bottom part or in bottom to top 
not have any problems. Application to physical, physical to application, no problem. But do not interchange this one. Guys, when I'm telling, I said at PCB, at PCB, so it received a ACE MAC address and ACE IP address, right? Received yes MAC address and yes IP address. Now at PCB again at PCB create ARP table. What is ARP address resolution? Uh, I know that spelling mistake. Address resolution table. ARP is a protocol. Okay. Address resolution protocol table. Get a ARP table. Okay. ARP means address resolution protocol. So how it is? IP address. MAC address. So actually not MAC address, it will show as a physical address. So my ACE IP address will show here. And uh, yes, MAC address. How I got it? From, how I got it? Dynamically. So I will show you that again, guys. The commands for ARP table. So I will show you the commands. Okay. ARP space hyphen A. ARP space hyphen A to check ARP table. ARP space hyphen S to create a table, I will give you that point, okay? So this is command from ERP space item A. So my IP address here, this one, okay? This is my IP address, not these things. See it is? An IP address, physical address. My system LAN, these IP addresses and their MAC addresses dynamically. It is stable, static is stable, means fixed one. But these three MAC addresses, my laptop, my system learn automatically based on transmitting data, transmit and receive. When you receive a packet, the packet contains their source IP address and source MAC address. I put their source IP and source MAC address in the table called a ARP table. Okay, I learned this thing automatically that's why it is dynamic okay so if in case i put arp only then can you see this is you can create your own arp table as uh, per your requirement so this is the command uh, usually like you want to create your own arp table arp space hyphen yes why we are creating statically so statically is we are creating for security reasons you know when any secure places if you go to any secure network places they'll bind ip to mac address they'll bind my ip to mac address ip and mac address matches they will accept the packet ip and mac address not matches they don't accept the packet this is the one command, guys. ARP address resolution protocol. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, sir. Uh, uh, the table that you showed, the ARP table. So uh, you created that, or from where did it came from? The router. This table. This one, right? Yes. This one I didn't create. Automatically, it learned. 
Um, if you want to see how it is, uh, I have a mobile, right? So both my mobile and my laptop are connected to same network, same Wi-Fi network, okay? So I'm going to my mobile phone settings. So in the settings, I am to go to connections. My Wi-Fi connection. Then Wi-Fi settings. I got IP address. My Wi-Fi IP address is 192.168.1.33. Can you see 33 here? No 33, right? And uh, my mobile MAC address 9A8959E7 5F69. Okay, remember at least uh, some names here. Otherwise, I will write here. Okay, starting is uh, 9A, last one is 69. Okay, so at least uh, try to remember these two points. Now, what I'm trying to do, I'm pinging to my ping is two way request, guys. Actually, if I send a packet, if I send a packet from my mobile phone to my laptop, then my mobile phone can able to recognize means ARP works based on incoming packet. You send, you don't recognize. You send and receive, you will recognize. Or you receive, you will recognize. That is the thing. So ping is two way, means you send as well as you receive. So what I'm doing, I'm pinging to my mobile phone. This is my mobile phone IP address. This IP address is not here, okay? So I'm pinging to my mobile. So I send a packet and I will receive the packet also. Okay, that's a reply from 1.33. Reply from 1.33. It means my ping is successful. <laughs> Connection is there. Communication is there. So this is ping, how to ping. You know the destination IP address, ping to it. Make sure both are communicating each other. What is ping? Uh, yeah, yes, tell me, tell me. Connection is established. Yeah, connection is two way. Connection is established. Make sure. Ping is a test command. Guys, ping is used to test whether source to destination, destination source, connectivity is there or not. Communication is there or not. Connectivity is there or not. Okay. Now, ERP space hyphen A. Check the ERP table. Now, when I received a packet from 1.33, so see, I got a MAC address of my mobile phone. Earlier it is not there, now it is there. Why? Because of earlier I didn't communicate from my mobile to laptop or laptop to mobile. Now just a ping, so I send a packet to mobile and mobile reply a packet to me. So obviously when I received a packet, ARP table will be created. It is created automatically. If you want to create manually, then also you can create it like this using this command. Okay, using this command. What is the advantage of ARP, guys? In generally, we don't mind about it. Uh, there is a lot of uh, advantages are there. That is explanation is bigger. Not bigger, so step by step explanation is there, but simple in secure places, people do ERP static. In normal places, it's okay dynamic. Advantage of dynamic is um, actually initially you are pinging to your destination with IP address, but you don't know the MAC address of destination PC. When I'm pinging to my mobile phone, my system don't know MAC address of my mobile phone. My system don't know MAC address of my mobile phone. While I'm sending a packet, I have to send my source IP, destination IP, source MAC address, destination MAC address. In this one, I mentioned destination IP address, but not a destination MAC address I don't know. First time. 
But second time, second time, when I receive a packet from destination to the source, the destination means A to B is there. A send a packet. A don't know B's MAC address. Now B replied. Now B, A, what it will do? A and B knows others MAC address. B knows A's MAC address. A knows B's MAC address now. Now next time they communicate, so they will communicate with both A and B. See it is? How much confusing? <laughs> Reverse ARP. Yeah, don't worry guys, ARP means IP to MAC address. ARP means IP to MAC address, my name. For example, 10.0.0.11. MAC address is something 00334B. C E E six two four a one two three six so one more is there uh, E E yeah. E one no one how it is then a uh, dynamic okay when a communication is happened when a device received a packet guys when a device received a packet the the packet the received packet contains the source ip address and source mac address so the device take that source ip and this source mac address put it in the table called a arp in arp ip address to mac address binding it is you very useful when it is communicating from source to destination part but point is not that one guys understand guys are you understand OSA layers or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or we will discuss networking devices and IP address part and small small things are there. Tomorrow we will complete that one. Monday onwards freshly we will start the other things networking. So PC uh, other thing can be started. So in, the mode, in the OS OSI model or this is only the which one? Require. In yeah, the OSI this is model enough. with more detail. OSI model in seven layers. Yeah. So we'll go in encoding and checks redundancy checks. Or we just need to know the basics. One second, one second. This is hello. Oh, yes. What it is? Whirlpool.
fully demanded voice. <laughs> so this calls. Uh, guys, you are telling something. I just. Uh, wait, wait, wait. You are telling something. I, um, I, did, I just stopped. Please tell me, please. Yeah, what voice yes, says uh, something? Do we need to go in more detail or is that is, is that? Yeah, it is. It is. So what are the seven layers? Each layer, what it will do? What is the thing about uh, each layer and each packet part means what is a segment uh, like transport layer will generate a segment part or a network packet data link layer frame. OK, Mac is here and devices layer one device layer two device kind of stuff. OK, physical layer what it will do. Those kind of stuff. Very basic details are enough. What is the encoding? How it is encoding happens? That much depth is not there because you are not doing the um, uh, core uh, designing of uh, uh, frames, right? So usually, if you go to the test works, then this is the TCP. How it is original TCP? I have to explain this one. But basic understand acknowledgement is enough. The synchronization wait time that is not required. OK, or if you want to go to. Transport layer segment structure is there. Like this, if I keep telling like this. So it will take a lot of time, not only a time guys, people will get mad. And they, they, it is we don't go that much depth is not required. OK. So that is will be possible. You can learn that. OK, so tomorrow we'll discuss this. That's it, guys. That's it for today. Have a lunch. Thank you, sir. Be prepared every day. Be prepared, guys. You don't get much time.